Grüdigerfuchs has little time for ceremonies and cabin tours. There are still major hurdles to overcome on the A380 assembly lines, and time is of the essence. It's like football. As soon as one match ends, preparations for the next one begin. That'll be the toughest challenge. So we're still under a lot of stress. We're happy about what we've accomplished and about today's outcome. But we'll soon be in meetings to get ready for the next game, so to speak. The pressure is enormous, especially since Airbus came perilously close to losing the first match and tournament. On May 7th, 2006, an A380 landed at the Airbus assembly facility in Hamburg. It was scheduled for delivery to Singapore Airlines, but the interior hadn't been installed yet. That was supposed to take place in Hamburg, but it soon became clear that something was amiss. The complex electrical wiring schemes were poorly designed. Engineers had underestimated the difficulties of installing cabins with such a complicated system of cables. In addition, plans for the aircraft were constantly being changed, not to mention the individual specs demanded by Singapore. Assembly workers were mired in a bewildering maze of wires, tubes and circuits. Nothing seemed to work as it should. Airbus was confronted with a problem of such magnitude that the entire A380 project hung in the balance. The only solution was to rip all the wiring out and start from scratch. Every single cable was reinstalled. 120? It's 500 kilometers of cable in all. The assembly workers took little notice of the World Cup soccer tournament hosted by Germany, nor of the unseasonably warm summer. They toiled for days, weeks, months on end in the belly of the whale. The workers showed enormous commitment over an extended period of time. They went without vacation and put in incredible amounts of overtime. You can't imagine how much. And all they got in return was frustration and pressure and suspicion. It was soon clear that the A380 project was drifting close to disaster. By autumn of 2006, Delivery dates had been pushed back a third time. The crisis was coming to a head. By the end of the year, the A380 was a big question mark. It looked like we were flying straight into a wall. Bright blue tags hung all over in the belly of the aircraft, pointing out design flaws that needed to be ironed out. It wasn't just one single problem. The entire wiring schematic had to be reconfigured. Fuchs and his chief engineers focused entirely on finding solutions at the expense of family, friends and private life. At the same time, the Airbus facility in Hamburg was fighting for survival. As someone who went through this period, I realized one thing. At some point, the company faced a fundamental question. If one facility can't measure up, should we transfer the task somewhere else? Every evening, Fuchs convened a meeting of production managers and engineers. Above all, he demanded uncompromising frankness. Problems would be confronted, not swept under the table. Officially, it was called the control room. Employees called it the crisis center. Fuchs took to calling it the war room. And no one left in the evening until pressing matters had been fully discussed. 
It was an exercise in persistence under pressure. I never saw anyone break down in tears, but each daily meeting was highly emotional. There's no question about that. It also took considerable energy. Everyone was exhausted after those meetings in the war room. More often than not, the lights burned far into the night. 